This is Morning Edition from NPR News. I'm Michelle Martin. And I'm Layla Falden. Seventy-two and mostly sunny now. Air quality alert today at eleven. Mostly sunny and eighty-six for a high today, and then tonight a low around sixty-one. Tomorrow afternoon shower and thunderstorm chances. Mostly cloudy and sixty-three. A highs this weekend in the sixties as opposed to the eighties. Seventy-two and mostly sunny at eight fifty. <laughs> WNYC is supported by the New York Historical Society and its exhibition, Nature, Crisis, Consequence, a look at the social and cultural impact of environmental crises on communities across history through art. Tickets at nyhistory.org. Marketplace Morning Report is coming up next, and then in 10 minutes at 9 o'clock, it's the BBC News Hour on 93.9 FM. Let's check in with London to see what they're working on. London, good morning. Good morning, WMYC. I'm Regini Vaidyanathan on today's News Hour. A 21 year old member of the US National Guard's due in court in connection with a massive leak of military documents. That's BBC News Hour coming up at 9 on 93.9 FM, WMYC. Next time on the New Yorker Radio Hour, can a social media app with 150 million users be banned? TikTok arrived in about 2018. It coincided with the same period of collapse in the U.S.-China relationship. If you're a member of Congress, you say, this is something I can talk about. Evan Osnos on the politics of TikTok, next time on the New Yorker Radio Hour. Listen tomorrow morning at 10 on 93.9 FM or get the podcast. How are the banks doing given the wild ride last month when two medium-sized ones went bust? Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Baird, dedicated to attracting and retaining talent from across the financial industry, providing continuity for clients. More at BairdDifference.com. And by Otter.ai. Otter's AI meeting assistant automatically takes live meeting notes, captures slides, generates summaries, and assigns action items. More at Otter.ai. I'm David Brancaccio. Big banks today are reporting profits that would be the envy of most other companies. In the first three months of the year, profits soared at J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Citigroup. Higher interest rates passed on to customers sure helped. Marketplace's Nova Safo is here with more. Yes, they sure did, David. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase reported a 52% increase in profit to nearly $13 billion. That's compared to last year's first quarter. Wells Fargo's profit was up 32% up 7% at Citigroup. We also heard from PNC Financial among the top 10 biggest banks. Its first quarter profit was up almost 20%. JP Morgan said it saw a meaningful increase in account openings over the last month. That confirms what we've been hearing after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, that some depositors moved money out of small and medium-sized banks and into the nation's biggest banks, which are perceived to be safer. No, but what about the next few months? What are the projections from these banks in terms of where we're headed? Well, yeah, that's where it gets a little more uh, convoluted. J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup are all setting aside more rainy day funds in case of loan defaults. J.P. Morgan, the nation's biggest bank, set aside the most, $2.3 billion. It also said that credit card Credit card delinquencies are up. It characterized that as a return to normal, though, after a period in which consumers were really flush with cash. But the increase in rainy day funds does follow a darkening outlook, David, for the economy. Federal Reserve economists now think, with the banking sector problems last month, a mild recession is likely to start later this year. All right. Thank you. J.P. Morgan stock is up 6% in pre-market trading now. City up 2%. Wells Fargo up 4%. After the NASDAQ index rose 2% yesterday, given news that prices are not rising as fast as before, this morning NASDAQ futures are the other way, down six-tenths of a percent. Dow futures are up 30 points, or about a tenth of a percent. The Kelly Blue Book people have new data on car sales, and it looks like buyers now have gotten back some of their negotiating power with, with less of that 
take it or leave it when buyers try to negotiate. Here's Marketplace's Savannah Marr. For the first time in nearly two years, the average new car buyer is paying less than the manufacturer set sticker price by about $171. It's a reflection of inventory shortages, which have really eased over the last six to nine months. Garrett Nelson, an auto analyst with CFRA, says some automakers have finally been able to get their hands on more semiconductor chips and make more vehicles. New car prices are still much higher than pre-pandemic, at an average of just over $48,000. But Jessica Caldwell with the car site Edmonds says the buyer experience is shifting. Consumers will be able to do a little bit more shopping and not necessarily just be dictated that this is the vehicle, this is the color, kind of a take it or leave it situation. After two years of surging demand, Caldwell says dealerships are now hoping modest discounts will incentivize car sales. But with high prices and interest rates, she says some consumers will continue to wait it out. I'm Savannah Marr for Marketplace. And we're getting the numbers on the toll of an explosion at a dairy farm in Texas this week. The sheriff's department there estimates 18,000 cattle were killed in the town of Dimmit between Amarillo and Lubbock. Investigators suspect a methane leak. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by SoFi. With a SoFi High Yield Savings Account, members can earn more money on their money. Plus, deposits are FDIC insured. Learn more at SoFi.com. SOFI.com. Get your money right. SoFi Bank N.A. Member FDIC. And by Vantage Score. Vantage Score's credit scoring models help expand financial inclusion by leveraging predictive analytics at VantageScore.com. Artificial intelligence can paint nightmarish pictures. It can compose music that's eh. But what about giving advice on personal finances, savings, and investing? How good is the advice you get back? Marketplace's Stephanie Hughes looked into this. First, meet the AIs we're talking to today. I am Bard. Created by Google. And I am ChatGPT. Created by OpenAI. And they will both tell you, I am not a financial advisor. And I am not licensed to provide financial advice. That said, it can be tempting to ask them questions about money. Now, meet our human. I am Kaya Ladajobi. I am a certified financial planner. Ladajobi is in Atlanta and has her own practice advising individuals and small business owners. One question she's often asked, should they pay off debt first before investing? We put that query to both ChatGPT and Bard, who had very similar answers. In general, it's a good idea to pay off high-interest debt before investing. Whether you should pay off debt debt before investing depends on a number of factors, including... They went on longer, and Lada Joby said the answers were pretty good. Maybe 85% of the way there. If, you know, this question were posed to me as an advisor, there are other things I would add. Like by paying off debt, are they leaving free money on the table through something like an employer match to a retirement account? And do they have enough money for an emergency fund? At least those two areas I would bring up as a human advisor, not AI, you know? Trouble is, sometimes these chatbots sound like humans, too. They're very, very good at language. Michael Littman is a computer science professor at Brown. But they're actually not that good at other things. And he warns AIs are... Perfectly comfortable giving inappropriate responses, and so they could potentially give you advice that if you were to follow it, would guarantee that you're going to go bankrupt. Both Google and OpenAI say their chatbots should not be relied on for financial advice. And professional financial advisor Kyle Adajobi said she's not worried about losing work to them anytime soon because she's able to advise clients individually in a way a chatbot can't. They call it personal finance because it's personal. That said, Lada Joby's thinking about how to use AI in her work. On our Zoom call, she actually had an AI join to record and take notes. She said it's a tool that can make her faster at her job, so she has more time to do the work that, so far, only humans can do. I'm Stephanie Hughes for Marketplace. And for a primer on economics and the way policymakers think about these numbers, consider signing up for our Marketplace Crash Course, Econ 101. It's free, and you can learn along with me at your own pace. Start anytime. Marketplace.org slash crash course gets you to that. I'm David Brancaccio with our Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.